tear into one of these. I'm gonna allow myself to, to get a little ahead of myself. God damn it, Ryan. Hello, welcome to episode one of building a home-built experimental aircraft. Uh, I'm Ryan from Ryan Flies, and over the next few years, we're gonna be building a aircraft here in this shop. Uh, during this episode, I'm gonna outline what it is we're building, the model of it, uh, and go over some practice kits that I got from Vans Aircraft, showing some of the basics of the, the principles of what we're gonna use to build the actual airplane itself. Uh, first, I'd like to show what I've done here in the shop over the past couple weeks in order to get this ready and outfitted with all the tools and workspace needed in order to build this plane. Stay tuned. spray booth. Um, this is where I had initially thought about placing it. The problem is uh, it's a little small uh, if I put it here, but I think I might forge ahead. Um, I know this will probably need to be redone as I get into other parts of the aircraft. It's simply not big enough um, for probably anything but the tail. Um, but I think it might maybe work as a proof of concept and allow me to refine things uh, as I move forward. So. I may just go with this, I may mull it over a bit and see if I can get it a little bigger. If it goes any bigger, it's going to have to go on the other side of the garage. There's a whole other mess of problems that I'll have to work out if I do that. So for now, I think this is what we're looking at. this Dremel circle cutter tool for uh, probably about seven years. I don't think I've ever used it. Um, I've managed to use it quite a few times in the last, I don't know, couple hours. It's like my favorite tool now.
just about, I think, done with the actual structure itself. Uh, it's pretty cool. The walls are up, all the plastic sheetings on, sheetings on the roof, I got protective coating on the floor, the fans in place. Uh, the only thing I don't have at this point, the table inside um, and the exhaust fans. Uh, but I will be making that shortly. Hey, so behind me is the priming booth that I've been working on uh, over the past couple of days. Um, but I wanted to take a moment and, and stop while I have the, the shop relatively clean and go over some of the things that you've uh, probably seen me do, albeit in time lapse. Um, this, this was uh, a bare garage uh, only a few weeks ago. Um, the things I've been putting together have all really been for this build. And so I've added tool storage, um, I've added some tools. So the main tools that we're gonna use for the project uh, are behind me, or some of the main ones are behind me. Uh, the drill press, the bandsaw, um, and of course the, the bench grinder, where I'm sure I'll spend hours and hours, if not days and days, deburring, separating parts, drilling parts, things like that. Um, that's not where they're gonna live, I'm kinda just storing them there. They'll eventually be pulled out and put onto these two tables that you saw me build. The tables are the traditional EAA uh, build tables. They're, they're sort of just basic tables on casters, I think, designed at the right height and, and to get a good yield out of your materials and just to be affordable, stable, um, really all-purpose tables. Um, so I put those together. Uh, behind me, eventually, there will be an airplane. Right now, it's filled with garbage waiting for me to do a dump run, and I will be doing that as soon as I can get a vehicle to take all that stuff to the dump. Uh, elsewhere in the shop, uh, I've got a computer that's not hooked up, but eventually I'll, I'll hook it up. That'll be used for quick reference, um, hitting up the internet and things like that. Again, uh, the primer booth nearly done. We'll get into the finishing aspects of that and what it's designed to do momentarily. Um, and once again, over on this side, I've got shelves. Right now there's uh, some staging of stuff. I'm gonna try and get them mostly cleared out because that's where we'll be storing a lot of the parts for the build as I take them off. Um, well, first they will go on being inventory and then I'll take them off as needed um, to start building. And so that's a little bit, a quick tour. I hope to get it cleaned up even more in the, in the next week um, and then uh, hopefully in a week or so, maybe two weeks, we'll actually get started on the build. Uh, to start, I've got these two practice kits, three really. Um, <laughs> I busted them into one last week. This is the main part in each of these kits. Uh, I went ahead and got one made. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to, to do it. Uh, what this essentially is, um, is a practice control section is what they call it. <clears throat> so you can imagine uh, this is a section of perhaps the aileron here or maybe even the elevator here. Uh, I don't think it's an identical copy to either of those pieces, but it, it holds the same principles, the same type of construction. Um, and it really is just to get you practice working with sheet metal, working with rivets, deburring, uh, dimpling, all of that. So what I would like to do, um, because Completing one, I, I could tell, is nowhere near enough practice. Is I'm going to go ahead and get these two made. Um, hopefully, coming out a little better with a little less dings and dimples than this one uh, here on video. things can be really hard to tell the difference between um, once the bluing's off. Pins are to sewing what Clecos are to sheet metal. They are essentially just a temporary clamp.
Okay, so now everything is together. It's held in place uh, by Cleco. <laughs> excuse me, Clecos. Um, and everything's been match drilled, so drilled through the holes. Um, and it's ready to dimple, and we'll go through that in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble it all, clean up the space a bit, and then we'll get to dimpling, and then after that, cleaning, priming. Your, your uh, wrists and arms and hands get real tired. So, I'm lazy, I bought this guy. Let's, uh, let's see how it works. There's a few different types of rivets. The first is, is what's called a universal type rivet. And this is probably what you've seen uh, or what you're familiar with. It kind of has a domed head. Um, and, and I don't know, they, I think they come in all sizes. You could probably build bridges out of them. With that, we simply will set that rivet, squish it on this end, and we're done. Because we are building an aircraft, uh, often we use a countersunk rivet. Uh, and those have this flat head, but you can see it sticks up above and isn't completely flush unless we do what's called dimpling. So dimpling is going to put a dimple right in both of these surfaces so that when this sits in there, if I can get it in, it'll sit flush. And that way we have a really smooth aerodynamic uh, surface. can't get in there with the, the dimple tool. Um, most of these I would normally handle with the squeezer, but the, the yoke that I need for the squeezer I don't currently have yet. So I've got this bolted into the table, um, and essentially it's, it's a very even more low-tech dimpler. And a little bit of hammer, a little more hammer actually. And then we have a dimple. Um, so then we have this guy, which is a, um, a squeezer. Now, the squeezer, it works for rivets and dimples, and right now I'm gonna dimple with it. So, that piece has all the dimples. Remember, these don't get dimples because that has the universal head rivets. Um, it has been the bird, I believe. So it feels like there's a little something on there. Um, along with all my other pieces. So now, um, I think we're gonna head into uncharted territory, at least for me, which is I'm gonna clean all these parts with some pre-coat and get them ready for paint. So, from what I understand, pre-coat goes a bit like this. Um, we spray it on, we scour it with our 3M scotch Bright pads, uh, and what we're looking to do is clean, etch, and mar the surface, um, and, and really get it so it's prepped and primer will stick. We're going to wipe it off, we're not going to let it dry on there, and uh, from there, we're going to go directly back there on to the grate um, where we get them ready to paint.
happier with the primer I've chosen for the project. It took me a little bit to get it figured out in the booth, um, but it was it was dry to the touch within a couple hours or an hour maybe. Um, and, and now uh, the following morning, it's as hard as a rock. It was pretty easy to spray. It was pretty easy to clean up. So um, great news there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this uh, riveted together and we'll take a look at the project. To start, we're gonna create what they call the skeleton um, with these reinforcement plates, the spar and the ribs. Um, you'll see me using a little bit of the rivet squeezer and the traditional riveting gun. Stay tuned. here and that needs to be rolled into a nice round shape. Uh, I'm hoping to form it a little better than this. The way you do it's a bit tricky. Um, you actually take a broom handle, yeah you heard that right, a broom handle and duct tape it to the front of each of these and then twist that into a nice rolled edge. So uh, I'm going to give that a second try hopefully it comes out better than the first one. This kit number two is complete and except for a giant dent, um, it looks nicer than the first uh, and really overall I think I did a pretty good job. Really happy with the primer and the way that came out and I think I know exactly what to do with this. Well that's the first episode. If you're wondering, the practice kit I made made a, an excellent, albeit late, Father's Day present. Uh, and the first one I made, made an even later Mother's Day present. Um, next time we're going to go ahead and, and get started on the actual plane. I'll be starting with the tail surfaces, um, the horizontal stabilizer to begin with. So stay tuned, subscribe to get an alert when it comes out, and we'll see you then.